Thank you so much for staying tuned. This is TMI. You can call it this morning on ITV. Like I said earlier on, it's all about what is happening around us. Now we're going national and of course it has this impact also on the states. Yes, talking about the proposal to cut government costs. The allowances of political office holders, the impact in governance, and after that, we'll take a look at the new minimum wage approval, so to speak, expectation of Nigerians. With me here in the studio to really talk on these two topics, I have a, a legal practitioner, he's a doctor in that field right now. Jimmy, to welcome uh, Dr. Patrick Awo Osagi, yeah, a legal practitioner, Esquire, if you want to call him that. Doc, welcome to the show. It's my pleasure. I appreciate your coming. Thank you. All I'm right. Yes, at home. So it's been on for quite a while. Now you get to hear persons complaining of huge costs in governance. You get to hear make it part time. You get to hear we don't need a kind of maybe. Uh, one arm should be totally expunged. We don't need such an arm. Or the numbers are just too much for Nigeria to really take care of because of the huge cost in maintaining these political office holders. And of recent also, some would take it with a pinch of salt. Uh, a member of the Senate, an ex-governor, Rosa Sokorocha, uh, he was talking about it in the chamber as he felt like crying. Many Nigerians saw the positive side of it. Others are saying, uh, it's got into your turn right now. Is that why you want to complain and all that? But he made a point. Now, when the budget was released, the Minister for Labor and Employment, Chris Ngige, also took a swipe at it, saying, look, it's like we are wasting so much money in this regard. And it got to the president. He listened to the yearnings and cries of Nigerians, both from the top and uh, for the downtrodden, so to speak, and he said he's going to do something about it. Though he has done something about the ministers, but now what about the political office holders? That is where we are in right now. How do you feel about all this? Thank you very much, Winston. It's, um, it's a welcome development in a way, but my worries is that it's coming from someone who ordinarily should not even talk. Because when you're talking about um, so much money expended from definition of democracy as it stands, from the nitty-gritty of time, we know it's a, a very capital-intensive um, system of government. It's not, um, it's not a cheap one. You know, we have a lot of persons to attend to, which behoves on the fact that everyone that plays there will be funded, as it were. But I also honestly believe that these funds are over bloated. I think that is where we have challenges. It's not as if we have so much money, a hell of persons could be involved. If they are getting not too much, so to say, considering what you consider a minimum wage of a civil servant, they are all government workers, so to speak. Mm -hmm. They are working for the same government. Even if I have, don't have to play politics, I have to be in the, in the government uh, circle. Then when you consider me to receiving XYZ money, and then uh, you also should take some, maybe a little addition to it because of your moving around, because you run in government, as it were. But I don't think, um, if we can really cut these SSs down, I think it will be a good uh, development because we look everywhere. And we see now who are those buying properties abroad? Who are those, you know, running society? Why are people dying to become commissioner, to become minister, to become one aide of governor or whatever? Because of the money that is in it. Why is what is even ruling the crisis within town in Edo here now, for instance? It's because something is not coming forth. Some boys are not, are not happy with the governor. You know, these are some of the. It has been an institutionalized stuff that had been there over time. So we're trying to pull away now, it looks like, what's that happening? What's this happening? So that is basically what's in mean, the likes of Rocha Sokorocha. I see them as, um, <laughs> with all respect to him, I don't really take him seriously because a man that woke up one morning and started erecting sculptures of pastor leaders of nations that are undergoing, even to date, 
And the likes of Jacob Zuma is undergoing criminal trial and all of that is appeal. I think he has filed his final appeal as his way now. And uh, that's a man whose statue was up in Imo, you know, where it doesn't add up. So when he makes comments, I believe he's trying to, to just communicate or to try to just speak from both sides of his mouth. And I honestly believe leaders should not operate that way. Well, that is your own opinion. Because it's my opinion. It's, it's my opinion. Yes. It's my opinion. As a leader, you've been governor for crying out loud. You've served as a government presidency at that time. And you have, you know, when you were governor, what did you really do? Did you really bring all of this to bear? Is it now that you are no longer there, you are talking of this and that and what have you? You expended money and you were doing all you needed to do erecting structures here and there. And I think, in honesty, I feel such comments are unfounded and they are, they are really mischievous in, for a man of his kind. If an ordinary Nigerian come up like that to but, speak. But, but the thing is that ordinary Nigerians have been talking. They've been speaking about yes. this. Nothing was done about it until he spoke about it. And, and I, they want to, I want to disagree with you that it's not because he spoke about it. It has nothing to do with his speaking about it. You know, obviously, you know that um, we in this, they're, 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 what, 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 okay, what was done about it? That they have said, um, you know, uh, circles of ministers should be, you know, before you travel and all of that. Those are just talk in it. And I swear, well, I don't know, because if you look, take a look at that, that will not affect anything. We are not talking about, we are looking at, you are heading a ministry. You are a commissioner of a particular ministry, or you are you, you minister of yeah yeah you are minister of a, of a particular um, arm of an institution of government of sort like that. And then at the end of the day, they are saying you should not travel. For crying out loud, if you are saying I shouldn't travel, and you feel like we'll be squandering some money, my son can travel for me, my daughter could travel for me, my wife could travel for me, my girlfriends could travel for me, my friends and associates could travel for me. So I don't see that curing anything. It's just to talk. Like I said, if we want to really get down, well, who really audits them? Do we really hire professional auditors from the circles to check out the fundings? We, we have a whole lot of deficits in some of their balances, and nobody is looking at that. Who do you get professional auditors to check? You are trying to say, oh, we don't want to spend so much money. When you don't travel, you won't spend that money, isn't it? Okay, come on. We have money, illicit funds got in via crime and corruption that could be pushed to family and friends and loved ones. So, and to me, it's really not, it's not affecting them in any way. You, can, they, you know some person could even serve and tell you we don't want to be paid. You just want to be very philanthropic at this instance. We don't want to be paid. We don't want the money. We don't want to serve our country. Everybody claiming to serve Nigeria. But when they say get out of the office, he says, no, I don't want to leave. If it's a service that is done out of sincerity and genuity and is done from your heart and you know you are not going to get anything from it, you will not be dying to remain there. So there must be something more than the pay. That is what we should start looking at. All right, something more than the pay. If you just joined us, we're taking a look at the proposed uh, uh, allowance court in government office holders. We're taking a look at its impact in governance. Whatever they say here, whatever he's saying here, he has alluded to it already. In his opinion, it has nothing to do with ITV, but we're doing our best possible to make sure all our guests follow the rules and regulations governing the airwaves. Now, let's come back again to this issue on the ground. You said it's going to amount to nothing. Absolutely. So why would you tow that line, knowing fully whether we're talking about saving culture in Nigeria, at least to have more to do projects that will benefit Nigerians? Thank you very much. You see... Leadership is by example. And uh, John Mason has said, um, leader, everything rise and fall on a leader. We knew our president, Muhammad Buhari, who had been challenged me medically over time, and he spent over two years or thereabouts of his previous um, term uh, abroad, trying to fight for his health. Now, one would, would have expected by now, we would have started having functional hospitals because of the peculiar nature of his ill health or what he personally had gone through. Mm. And I had a wife saying the other day that she was ill and she took ill after the lesser heart she had gone through and then she had to stay back in England for two months to be treated. Hi by my mom in the village. Hi by my sister in, the, in town. Can she also go do that? For this is, these are the issues we're talking about. So when I said it's some lip services, mm. let's see practical work. Let's see, I know when Lucky Igbenedion when he was governor of Edo State, in Ambrosali University, he said he wanted to build the hostel that was named after him 
And um, he said well, that was the first time I could see that it, direct labor. And that was how we, we saw students even going to join and getting money, get, being paid. That project didn't take anything. It was completed. So what I'm trying to say, if government is ready to work, they know what to do. That work was done and the building is still standing. And we saw it rising by the day. Nobody coming to tell us one billion was on one block because students were delivering blocks and people within the community working together. And it was, it was fun. When you're growing up, you know, in class today, you go to pick up blocks and then you make some money. And it was a wonderful thing. So when we are talking of building hospital, we are making it look like it's coming from heaven. Where we are traveling to overseas, are there no people, were there no people that build them? Mm. So can't we think, can't we work, can't we begin to affect our people in the same manner? But is it not part of thinking and working, started by cutting costs? It starts from very, very serious. Cutting costs, like mm. I said, that mm. is just on the paper. Mm. You're just talking about cutting costs. Okay, don't travel, don't travel. Okay, you travel so much the other time. Oh, okay, fine, I, I've had you, sir. I've had you. That is to me. I said it's still not, what are you talking about? we we'll just start from there. It's not even, I'm looking at, okay, now you have been sick, you've been challenged. Thank God you came back alive. And our former president, Yaradua, also had similar fate of ill health. And that suggests to say that these men, despite all they have attained or the height they have attained, they have been a poor management of their health. That's my opinion, like you said, yes. Now, it's born out of the fact that where we are, because you really cannot assess. I remember Chief Fawe in me of Blessed Memories, a senior advocate, and he said he was being treated for pneumonia in Nigeria. And they, he was not getting better. They were treating him. A man in his status, he had to travel to England. It's because he could travel to England. And when he got there, the doctor said, no, you, it's cancer. It's not cancer. I said, no, how will he said, I don't smoke. He said, but you may just be a rare person that have it. Mm. And then they were able to manage him over time and they recovered a while and they told him, but yet you're not going to stay too long. They knew everything about his health. So if we have had pockets of examples like this, I think it's enough. It's, this is the time. So sure the health sector should be so addressed. In as much as I know it should come, be, we'll talk about the electricity that is not working, but that aspect, women and children, Children die at will. Women just, you know, in terms of delivery because of, you know, these are things that, how are you not a citizen? You know, these are some of the things that bother people like us. You need to pay for everything. Now, do something for us that people will live and remember you for. We talk about First Tax 77. We cannot totally credit that to Obasanjo, Oloshegun Obasanjo. We know there was a man behind. We know there was a Moritala Muhammad who passed away. We saw his advocacy in trying to project the dignity of a black man all over the world. You can't just call us black and dummies. We wouldn't accept that. He did a festival. He did, he did something. We must showcase ourselves. We must repackage ourselves. We must rebrand ourselves. We must not be seen as some Lilliputians or non entities. We must not be regarded like that. We must be seen as people. We have Golden Voice of Africa. We have Tawa Balewa. We have Unam Biaziku. We have a whole lot of these are men. We have two men. Now we have a whole lot of them. So we cannot just regard ourselves as some apron string tied to begging, cap hand, begging money, help us, help us syndrome. We, are, we can play and compete with the international community well if we so desire and decide to do so. And that is why I'm saying it. At this level of our national life, we cannot be here. We are still looking for candle and sticks to treat people in health center. We don't have, I remember Aisha Buhari, a great woman I so respect. My respect for that woman has swan high. She said even in the Asso Rock, um, you know, uh, what do you call it now? Their medical facility there, that they, despite the huge millions that have been poured in, they don't have medicine, they don't have in the Asso Rock, where my president is, where he's been treated. Who is in custody? Who took the money? Are these people not supposed to be unraveled? Are they not spirits? Can they be investigated? So these are some of the issues. If it's happening under my very president's nose, and nothing had been done, and you expect me to say because cutting down money will solve any issue. My brother, I don't think that is in the right. And yeah, it's okay to jump for the rights, and the, the, you know, at least we should be seen doing something. But I'm just, just talking about doing something. You see, when you want, I, I want to see us achieving results. It's not just, let's be acting. Okay, people say we work, we're just going to work. For what? How 
around you, walking, no impact, no meaning, no, doesn't affect you in any way, he's not doing anything. Ah, yes, these are some of the areas we are looking at. And All right, so you're talking about a proposal, cut because it's a proposal right now, from that of the ministers and the rest. I'm talking about proposal. You, you said it's like just a writing on the paper so that we'll seem as if we are doing something. But take a look at the budget. Because we're well, like saying that the strength of a nation lies in its budget. And in Nigeria, the case seems to, like, you know, differ in the sense that majority of the budget, a major part of the budget, mm -hmm. is the mark towards maintaining government. You talked about hospital, talked about power. Don't you think if there is a cut in costs, that can be channeled into the health sector, with to the power respect. sector, Thank you, to make it better? Yes, I agree with you. Now, listen. In the budget as it stands, it's already a working document signed to a law. And we look at it, about 75% of what you have there is, to, is for recurrence. Then the capital budget, there's not, it's less than 30%. Then how do you expect to make progress? No, 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 you don't need angels to come from heaven. And that is what the presidency is looking at right now. Even you talked about it. No, no, if we're looking at it right now, before yes. we come up with the budget, what was... What, uh, why did we not look at it at that time? Are you not going to be fighting an already established law? Something that has been passed into law? Is that what you want to start saying, no, we won't accept it now, we want to start courting? I, I'm, I'm trying to understand that line of argument. What my own line of argument is this. Before we even put pen to paper, I remember my lecturer, Professor Sagale, had told us, when you want to write, sit down first, relax yourself, and Calm down your nerves. Don't think about anything. Then start meditating on what to do gradually before you know it. Start penning down gradually. Say you've not started writing. Pen down, please. Gather your points. Then you start developing them gradually. I think it's natural for everybody. We cannot have a budget already now staring us in the face. Then we want to start looking into it. Then what were we doing before the time of putting that together? These are the very big questions we'll be asking ourselves. Now, you have, we have a budget that is funny. We don't even have capital stuff there. We just have recurring servicing government, this and that, 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 you know. A whole lot of talk. This is on, it's on, it's, it's, it's not, it's not going to help the system. It's just like, let's continue, let's manage it. Let's keep managing it. How will you keep people like this? And not even the minimum wage, we know the saga on it already, we're going to come to we'll that. We'll get to that later. on the later yeah, part of this discussion. So the, yes. the basic thing I'm, I'm trying to talk about here is this. You cannot have a ready budget that you have already come up. Because before you pin down, professionals around you have advised you, you know, all of them have put their pen together and they have said, this is what we want. This is the direction we need to go. And even if you don't really understand, they should have explained it to you as a president. This is what we should do now. And they would have given their proposition. And oh, maybe your aides and those allies of yours that look at it, okay, yeah, I think it's in a good direction. Before you now say, okay, now we are throwing it to the public. Now, when it's been thrown out and then it has been passed into law, and then you want to say again that we need to start cutting. Now, we should have thought of that as an issue. We should have thought of that as an issue. You know, I see it as a political gimmick. Uh, that's how I see it. In the likes of uh, Rochas, okay, Rochas coming up to speak. Okay, okay, now you can see now that what I'm doing is yielding some fruits so here. That's not what we're talking about. Nigerians have grown beyond the era of just talking. In short, we don't even need talk talkatives. We don't even need people talking around. Just act and we'll see your works. We can see Palm House at Sapley Road in Benin City. We know that's the handiwork of Ogbemodia. We can see many things. Ambrose Ali University, we know that's the handiwork of um, Professor um, uh, Following Shaw and Bruce Ali. We know that's his handiwork. We don't need to run too far. We can see Yamo University. We know Shomale is instrumental to that. Mm -hmm. So we don't need, I don't even need to know Shomale as a person. I can see. I can see second. It's secular. Whether I like Oshomole or I don't like him, I know that's the handiwork of Oshomole. And the world is in order. It's not pulling. This is not politics. I know that's what Oshomele did. I know what second used to be like. I have walked through that place. I have walked on that street. I know what it used to look like. And I saw it and I drive through it now and I know what it is. So I cannot pretend to say, well, I don't like the man. I don't like his face. I didn't see what he did. I saw it. So you don't need to talk too much. Your talking will be limited. How many, how many folks are you addressing part time? 
<laughs> your works will, it's the legacy we're talking about I all right that now, is basically now, 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 now for what you're saying it's like the the, the place the cart be uh before the horse absolutely like that. yes that is exactly mm. exactly that is what it is so we should have sat down we have the thinking room we should sit down this is a project nigeria you know we shouldn't just make okay let's get on uh, okay what, what do you think is your idea now no it shouldn't be like that we should sit down and look at the problem because if we don't really understand the problem, we cannot fathom our solutions. I think that's basically the, the truth. Mm. We should know to the, what extent do we have this problem. I know some person will say, well, uh, we, have, we can't pay salaries. Uh, well, we cannot do this. Have you really gone down? Come on, is it about salaries? Do you really need to pay that much? Don't you think you need to encourage some people to start up? How about those in the private sector? How about those, the, 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 the small, medium skills and businesses? What impacts? Are they really having? Yes, I know there's, there are a lot of stuff out there that government have pulled out. Uh, how is it being monitored? How, these people, how do you get the feedback from the people on the feed? Whereas one man who is in government, who is brother, is uh, maybe an aide to the presidency of stuff like that, and you have a whole lot of persons around you that have been given money to run small and medium businesses. And at the end of the day, those monies are not to, well, not going to be used and they spend it on themselves. And then, we, how many people will leave FCC and NCPC, DSS arrest? How many? Will you arrest the entire, if we arrest the entire Nigeria, where will you put all of us? How many courtrooms do we have to? You see, there are a lot of things. Even they themselves, they are tired because of the kind of things that is happening. That is what we're talking about. So we see it happening. Okay, why did they not arrest those guys in Asoro? That did you, I mean, the, 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 the hospital there that takes care mm -hmm. of the president and they said, uh, nobody had it. Let's leave this one because if we start talking now, it will, it will become another issue. I know somebody must have been punished along the line, but we will not make it public. We just try to keep it around, whatever it is, for the wife of the president to cry out. So she is also crying out to me. <laughs> that so, oh, 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 now, yeah, now, yeah. now, for what you are saying, cutting of course is not the solution. It's not, sir. If that is not the when solution, you cut it here, what then is okay, the solution? All right. When you cut it here, I make it up on the other corner. What, what has happened? Okay, now, you're cutting costs. I'm supposed to receive, let's say, 40 million. Okay. You say, no, 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 no. I'm giving you 10 million. I say, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, no, 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 I won't even give you 10, I'll give you 5 million. I said, okay, thank you, sir, I appreciate that. 5 million, put it there. It's in bank account, everybody can see it. Then I go, it's a wins income. Bid for one contract. I'm to sign it, I'm to approve it. That contract is actually for 100 million, right? Wins in, 200 million. He said, but it's so, it's so much. He said, no, come on, wins in. I know what I'm saying. I'm the one to market, I'm the one to approve it. Uh, you know, the 100 million will be shared with me and my friends. I have one other company, Save Nigerian, Nigerian Limited, is my company. I'm not a director, I'm just one person. There are some names there, sir. You pay the money to their account. I'm not signature to that account. So when you pay it there, then the, 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 the stooch director pull money and start sharing it. And then my, maybe one of my cousins somewhere picks up my own, starts it up abroad and buy property abroad. How much is my money? Is it not five million? Oh yes, it's still five million. I'm not traveling again because I want, in short, I want to face Nigeria. They face and be, create other little ways to pull money. So these are things that are. So talking about loopholes, we really loopholes will make be this somehow oh, yes. palatable oh, yes. for Nigeria. And, and the bad thing is this: the bad thing is this: you can really not seal up these holes. You say, "Well, how?" You can really not seal it up. You say, "How?" I tell you. You see, the president cannot be everywhere. I remember those days when we were kids, we want to play ball and, and um, maybe we, we, our grandmom don't want us to do, you won't live here today. Mm. I will lock the gate, you won't go. We should stay and sit at the gate. Mm. And we're all inside, pretend to be inside. The moment you see that every kid is inside, or not to others, we, sent, we, we planted a spy behind. The moment my mom moves, oh yeah, open that gate, we all run out. So she cannot be, he cannot really be watching. We need men of proven character. And I will have them, not in a hungry environment. Even those that don't want to devise evil because of the kind of things around them. I love what Sherry McIndy has said, you know, your state. He had told us that he thought as governor, his salary should be up to about three, four million. He said, you know, it wasn't up to that. 
when he was busy talking about I want to donate my salary, he was thinking he was going to donate. He said, ah, ah, even from where I'm coming from, I get more than this now. So your legitimate funds that you will get, it's, it's peanuts. But the illegit that you can manipulate is in hundreds of millions. So why will they now? So we must balance up this equation. We must make sure that the dignity of the average man is lifted. That's the only ground you cannot say, well, okay, if a policeman receives whatever, his uh, children are not going to go to school. They are going to school, and they want the best. I want the, they want their children to attend Igbenedian University. And to be in Igbenedian University, you need to pay the money. They need to fight hard. to you say, well, are there another university? Oh, I want my son and uh, my daughter to compete with the best of the best. I want it. So these are some of the issues. So why not create that platform for me to compete favorably and then really make money the way I should? That is the problem. Overseas, you could work. You could be working here. You could be working there. You could pay up your money. You, know, I could, I, you can decide your income part time, but not on a flat rate. We're just living like that. So why I said the way out of this is first and foremost, sincerity must be taught. You, when a leader is sincere with the people and sell the idea to them, which has been sold to them, now, don't go with anybody that has been pushed to you by someone. I know it's all about politics. It's all about interest. So if we don't have our interest, then how will we function? Then we must have a common goal. And I know it's a difficult task. We must have a common goal, but at the same time, hire private persons to keep watch. Those that are not in politics. Mm. Are Those in, that are not in politics. That are not in politics, that are not in your party. Hire them to keep watch. Then you cannot go to them. Let me know what is happening. If possible, people that are, they have a lot of persons here. We have accounting firms everywhere. Accounting is not to count money. To track. You'll have private practicing lawyers on their own. We have them. We have current certified engineers that are not in politics. They have made so much money, sure they are working all over the world. We have them. We have doctors all over. To keep on what these doctors are doing. Once in a while, you can return a check and say, What have you been doing? Let's see your record. Let's know what you are doing. I'm also practicing in Bayam and I'm in England. I'm, let me know what you are doing here. We have government and backing to do this. And when they see, other person. Now, once in a while, take them also for retreats. But, but we have trackers already. ICPC, EFCC, no, private investigators, even here in Nigeria. Is that not enough to see, track the cash? See, like, I, like I told you, it's not to track the cash. We are not looking at, we are not waiting for the crime to be committed. We are saying we want to work, we want to prevent crime. That one is, the money has already been diverted. Okay, money that is bid for construction of road. I have diverted the money to, a, to, a, to another account. Then EFCC is tracking it. That, that project is gone. Because you need to bring it back again. It, that's turning back the hand of time. Yeah, how can you turn back the hand of time? The money being found is now as if it. I have to go to court to go and tell court. This money, this is how it came. I will now speak all the grammar, my lawyers and team will, will fight in court. And maybe before we end up the battle, the governor or the president is out of office. And then we're not okay, we pay the money back to the government treasury or if we forfeit the money to government treasury. Is government treasury going to give us that road? So we shouldn't be so concerned about arresting a thief. We should be concerned about preventing the crime. I think that is how I see it. Well, we should get people. We should have some secret investigators. We saw what happened in the recent... Um, BBC uh, re re reviewers and documentary that saw some very supposed high flyers. Professor wanting to, you know, as, mm, sex as for sexual grade. sex for grade and marks and, uh, and even admission, as the case may be. You could see, if that young girl was not known, so the president himself would be shocked to his bones and marrow when he discovered what some of his aides and followers and people around him are into. That's the truth. So if you have people away from your immediate circle, how did BBC achieve that? Because they looked out for people. If they had gone to the Nigerian Union of Journalists and they say, okay, now, we have one friend there. 
The guy will put a call through. Oh, see what is happening. Everybody will now arrange. I remember those days in primary school. They said the governor is coming to visit us today. Everybody must come with your white stockings. <laughs> you must come. Sure, sure the teachers will be playing with you. They will even be rubbing your car, you know, <laughs> dancing with you, making you feel comfortable. They can even see a water dispenser in the class that has never been there. to just manufacture itself that day. And then the governor is coming and he's seeing the convoy coming in and they now bring those best ones that can talk. Okay, Patrick, come and stand up. Good morning, sir. What's your name? I'm so so and so person. And then you start reciting all the recitables. Those dumb, dummy ones will be kept behind so that the governor will not spot them. What have you achieved? Nothing. If you really want to get it, they are every night. I remember one governor, what was his name? I forgot him. Who will go to the market? He will disguise himself in a ricketing car and just go and start asking questions about what is happening. He will even go to some of the areas where he has assigned jobs and he will get first hand information. I know everybody can do that. But you can have men that believe in you. You could use to get directly that they won't have access to. I will take you to history again. Adolf Hitler. He had a woman who he had access to. And that woman was one major influence on his life. Do you know what he did? He separated her from the world. So nobody could reach her. If she had said anything to him, he would hack into it. Mm. So he, he, he keep that person away. So for you to get sincere counsel, you need to be not within your circle because these ones are sacrifices. That we keep dancing as yeah, Mr. President, Mr. Governor, you are doing well. You are there. You are man. You are a man. We believe in you. And this is how it is. And that, that's it. That's how it starts. So you have done so well. Go get election now. Everybody is endorsing and endorsing. Can I drive to Abuja again now? I won't risk it. Why? Because the roads are mad. I am not there. But people are saying, we endorse, we endorse. He's our man, he's our party man. He's, he tried. In short, it's an act of God. The way he came to, came to becoming governor, that's a campaign strategy again. How he had become <laughs> governor is God that brought him. As if God was the one that voted. I know these are some of the issues. We, we just make oh, spirituality, uh, mm. we make nonsense out of spirituality. Mm. I'm a Christian, I'm a cleric, I believe in all of this, but that is not what we're saying. We should believe in principle. Nothing works without principle. You cannot sow kukoyam and reap um, cassava according to uh, Majek Fashek. You cannot do that. It's what you sow, you reap. If you are sowing 30% in the budget, then what are you going to reap? You are going to reap the same problem we've been having, even worse in the state. We need to look inward. Why was this not reviewed before the budget came up? Is now we want to start talking about we cut this and cut that. Cut it and I will cut it from the other angle. Because there are other little ways to pay poor money. And that is it. Wow. That's in Nigeria we have today. Proposed court and political office holders allowance impact on governance and uh, Dr. Patrick Awo Saige, a legal practitioner, has been sharing his thoughts, his opinions, and of course his views on the matter. Salient point, he talked about having cancer outside your circle. Doing this before bringing out the budget. We are watching. Let's just see if this would be one of the first steps to be taken in salvaging Nigeria. I know that the president he has good thought and intentions for this country. Method being applied, kudos. What about the people around him? What about persons he's assigned to carry out specific functions and orders? He cannot be everywhere, according to what uh, uh, Dr. Patrick Awo Osage just happed. He's one man. He just can't be everywhere. Is this the beginning of a new Nigeria? Only time will tell. We'll take a break. When we return, it is going to be all about the minimum wage expectation of Nigerians. Do stay tuned. We'll be right back. TMI. Every opinion counts. Thank you so much for staying tuned. It's all about the new minimum wage, the approval and expectations of Nigerians. Yes, that's been the talk after much battle. The battle was fierce, and after it all, the boy was like, yes, we will the search, the trip, the the fight. And right now, workers will smile eventually. And Nigerian workers have been reacting to it. Even people that are not in the workforce, in the labor force, they are reacting to it also. Is that the best labor could get 
what I mean, labor, NLC, and TUC, and the allies could get for the Nigerian workers. I'm not saying, after all, uh, half bread is better than bombs. You know that outage and stuff like that. Well, still here uh, in the studio with me, it's a barrister, okay, Dr. Uh, uh, Patrick Awo Osage, a legal practitioner. The minimum wage, the battle according to labor, TUC, you just name it, it was fierce, but it came out with a good deal, what they call a good deal for the Nigerian workforce and all is cool right now, according to NLC, TUC, and their allied uh, uh, forces. So to speak, let me use that word. How do you see, what do you really feel about the conclusion of the matter after the battle? Well, was there any battle, if you must say? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I trying to issue threat more notes that we're going to go on you know, strike. strike as the case yeah. may be and you are being called upon to for some negotiation and my major worry is that what, what are we really negotiating again 2016 president Muhammad Dubari in his wisdom deemed it that this thing is biting hard and that's how to think well he saw it that Nigerians are not getting the best. Mm. Okay, let's make the minimum be this at least. You see, uh, many a times leaders, in their in sincerity to them, in being fair to them, they have this feeling too, in their privacy. And look, these people are having this problem. What do we do? But the bottlenecks. But his minister, Chris Ngiga, told us that 22. 1,500 should be enough to take a father of four children. Mm. I think that's how much he was spending when he was uh, maybe in his level. Now, you, 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 I, I don't expect such comments. Mm. You see, leaders, it's not about the rise in pay. It's about the economy. Patrice Lumumba of Congo, bless memory, had said, the independence we should clamor for is not political independence. It's economic independence. Economic independence. Yes, and they killed him for it. So when you advocate for economy, over the years, we are still be on economically independent. That's been the issue. So when we're talking about rising pay, it's not really about the rising pay. It's the economy. If the little money I have can take care of me, I don't have a problem. It's not to count figures, Bob Marley said. He said, figures, if your joy is hinged on numbers, he said your joy will never come to an end. You, it will be endless. You keep wanting. He said, because money and numbers are the same. It keep growing. So the idea of even increasing it was a good intention to cushion the hopelessness in society. But in the actual sense, it will not. Because... We have over time seen that these have not worked. If a governor says, I raise this one, I give you that incentive, other forces will come around to eat up that little stuff that I've been giving to you. Now, that's on the, on the one hand. Now, looking at it now, 2016, three years down the line, we now agree to make it a law. The same thing I said earlier on. We have put it in. I will sign it, okay. You implement. He said, well, I cannot implement. What did we do before signing? It took you three years. These people have been hoping and waiting. After three years now, you now sign. And when I said it has become a law now, <laughs> you must pay me my 30K and let me move. Then we have been waiting for the 30K. It didn't come. And Labour now said, no, 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 no. We can't continue like this. And meanwhile, the budget is already out. The same way, who did you consult before you draw your conclusions on what we will be receiving? And the government, I had that we have to retrench workers if we must keep to this. I don't think President Muhammad Bari was having the intention of retrenching workers when he was thinking along the line. So why now? What is happening? Okay, now, the budget, if, why didn't you negotiate with labor to know what will be worthy before going down to, and it's still the same funny ways, and now you have now bust them to a corner. Now listen, 
if you go on the street on your own, will come against you and all of that. And then there have been some, they have reached some point, they have some agreement. I know people will say when they have gave them money, it's not about giving money. They have looked at it. Why fight for what you, you, you know, it's already, it's already a completed act to a large extent. It's already captured in the budget and look at the money that is put there. I think the major issue now is what happened here? If I have my way, I would say that we challenge that in court because we were not part privy to this. We, we were not privy to this. We didn't do this. Now, we have said, okay, the 30 minimum wage is actually for the extreme, um, the low earners from uh, maybe the level 7 to 14. Then we can now be talking uh, from 14 to 17. We'll now be having another, we know what percentage to be adding to you. That is the agreement. I don't know clearly now. We'll get it details later on. But that is the agreement from zero, 7 to 14. Where is your money? Because if you push it to there, somebody will be receiving over 100,000 addition to what he had been receiving before. And I said that's not the kind of people we want to affect. And we want the very poor ones, which amongst us. Now, we are not talking of being rich or poor. We are talking of the economy. Because even if you give the, if the least paid person in Nigeria is receiving 100,000, he will still be saddled with this problem. Because things are not going in the direction they should go. Mm. I think that is where we have it. And obviously now, check the, the, the budget. I just said less than 30%. It's for capital and the elders is to service what has been there. Now, these guys working in government sector, the senators and the and what have you, all these men and all these agencies of government pulling billions and billions and billions to service offices. Can't we have a rethink along the line? But we have already, the budget is already there. And they say, well, we, will now, we, we, have, so we already have a budget. So this is the issue. So we are living what I would consider, this, this is what the people are living on. I'm, a, I'm an historian, and I, I will also think, I want to borrow from what Joseph Stanley did. Now, Joseph Stanley said, he wanted, um, he brought a chicken. He forcefully pulled out the feather. And the chicken was bleeding, you know. And then, Hungry, started throwing corn, and they would jump and pick and eat, moving around. And Joseph Stanley said, that chicken is the masses, and that is how you deal with the masses. If it has its wings, then it can fight and decide if you have its freedom. Now, when you are embroidered with issues that bother on feeding and paying your house rent and utility bills, you will care less about what is happening at the center. I don't want to start thinking along the line. Mm. I, want to, I don't want to start, but that is another way we could interpret this. Because when you keep a poor man poor, you don't make him aspire. There are some persons that could not attend secondary school. There are some persons that couldn't even go beyond the secondary school level because they knew, they were very intelligent, but they couldn't cross because there was nobody to fund it. You just know you're, you end up somewhere. And that is the society we don't want. Let it be that my dreams, my determination, whatsoever I wish to become, I can, I can fulfill it in my country. I think that is a better way. Why are parents crying? They can't pay their kids' fees. They cannot even feed. They can't live. Okay, what would they do? You said they should go out farming. Okay, fine. How would they even get there? The road to the farm is not a stone throw. Driving or transporting there. How will you weave the place and even plant and follow up? These are things that involve money. Can't government open up places like that and employ people still? Now, these are some of my thoughts. I'm just looking at it. It's like we just, just keep going, you know, just whiling away time. Time ordinarily should be invested in productive things. We look at the way things are going now. You are talking about the budget. You are talking about look at how we did. Not, well, they have agreed. Now, on their own part, I fought them. Who are you the, fighting right now? I'm fighting the, the, the labor. Mm. I'm fighting them. Why will you agree when you already come to this thing? I will see comrade uh, comrade Adam Sali Ushemale. I remember how he fought 
even as much as people still say, well, he, he did it for his personal gains. So, well, I don't know. There was a lot of advocacy. There was a lot of outcry. There was a lot of spelling things out. That was some level of, um, you know, expertise and skill. Um, with all respect to the present labor, I don't even, I don't hear him. We just heard that they had a meeting. He didn't address us. I, 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 maybe he did. He addressed them. Uh, he the addressed me. Yes, I'm, 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 I'm not saying, you should understand what I'm oh, talking no, about. No, 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 no. From what you said, they should have <laughs> talked to their guns and gone on strike. Is that what you're saying right now? Listen. Rather than compromise. The compromise, the compromise that he had reached with them. How well is this? Is it not supposed to, like I just raised some issues. I asked a very fundamental question. Well, how was it captured in the budget my pay when I have not been quizzed? I have not been asked my thoughts about this? It's just okay, this Winston. I, I think a shirt and trouser will be okay for Winston. Ah, for crying out loud, Winston is on natives and he wants to wear something like this. And then I say, come on, just wear it. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay for you. That's all we can do. We don't have materials anymore. That's what you are telling us. So you are giving it to me as if it's some privilege. It's my right. It's my right. The money you are dishing out is not your money. It's our money. We are Nigerians. That is my worry. The apple, that's why I brought in the Joseph Stanley. I don't want to start thinking along that angle because that's a very terrible way to think. Because it will be insightful. It will make people begin to see government as wicked. No. I would rather go the Martin Luther King's way to make you see that, well, we disagree with this. We will not fight. But we are not in conformity with what you have just done. I think that is basically how I say it. So that people don't begin to say, well, because the more you go to the streets and fight, you end up being more frustrated at the end. But we can stand to, even if it's for one week, we cannot just accept like this. We can say, well, no. Why will you just come into a talk? And you have not really, have you, I, I tell you the truth. In their local chapters, a lot of them are worried, they are angry, they are not happy. That our leaders have disappointed us. I tell you, I've had them say so. So I'm not just talking. So if they are pockets of, who, you have you reconstructed them very well, you just jump there and then you're taking the decision. We have, we have reached a, a, an agreement. They will believe that you have taken some money. So, for, so for, yes. what, for what you're saying, the agreement reached is not going to make any difference in a, a, an average Nigerian worker. It will make it. You know, you know for yourself already that the bags of rice and all whatnot, in as much as I'm not against the shutting down of the border mm. if that's the best way to ensure nigeria is not a dumping ground for now mm. then my worries have been what have those men of we have navy sorry we have yes we have air force we have the custom we have all of them on ground with guns and everything we are feeding them paying them bills and ensuring what have they been doing all right now you just hold on we'll return we'll continue with this discussion the implication the expectations of nigerians new minimum wage approval does it amount to anything? Can governors pay? Talking about the local government, the state government, what about the private sector? Can they really muzzle this bill? We'll be right back. Do stay with us. TMI, every opinion counts. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Really had to go for that break. But we are back right now, still talking about new minimum wage approval, the expectation of Nigerians with me here uh, are talking, uh, yeah, to the first discussion segment. And now on this discussion segment is uh, Dr. Patrick Awo Osaige, a legal practitioner, and we're really uh, uh, getting to know his own opinions and, of course, his thoughts on topical issues now we're still very much on the new minimum wage approval expectation of nigerians and from what you said it's like almost nothing to write home about because of the economy now let's take a look at the complaints of some governors when the battle was raging some of them said look we just can't pay it now with this adjustment let us approval do you see a situation whereby you get to hear some state governors owing the workforce backlog of salaries Thank you very much. Hmm. That is rather wickedness to, be def to define it. Even from the good book, our Bible, said a laborer is worthy, is worthy of his wages. So if a man has worked, he has been at work for 30, in short, it's just that we look at it as a common thing. 
if not that the system is like you, the government cannot, the government is at the upper hand. The government should have been arrested, <laughs> so to speak. Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm just trying to no, use. No, just the government no, 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 hold yeah. on. I'm trying yeah. to, I'm just, I'm just playing around. All right. Could have been arrested and prosecuted in court mm. for, for that. And that's a breach. Mm. A breach of contract and uh, we should be paid compensation for doing all of that, so to say. And but still, they don't have the money, they don't have the fund. I agree with you. I just, yeah. that's where we go back to Joseph Stanley. Mm. If you know what I said, yeah. pull their feathers, they are so weak, they can't even group, they are hungry. When you look at the stronger ones, they take some stuff and then you eat. And they can't, they are voiceless. And that is just the situation. Now, that is, for a governor to say, well, I can't pay, then why are you still there? Resign and go. No, no, it's not your father's birthright, or it's not your birthright, it's not your property. It's you're holding it for us in trust. It's our common patrimony, it's for us. So it's, it's funny when you say, I can't pay. If you can't pay, so, then that's okay. Just resign. That's the most civilized thing to do. Then why are you holding on to them? You are not telling us the truth. So I would not subscribe to any governor that say, I can't pay. I am aware of what Governor Godwin Obaseki had said in those state that <laughs> they have been paying and they will continue to pay. That's not an issue. So for a governor to come up and tell the people, you are working in vain. I can't pay you. It's, 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 it's the height of our funds. It's the height of uh, taking Don't the forget the situation in Kogi State before help came from above, so to speak, from the federal okay. government. Okay, what do we do with... What about some of the local government that are still owing salaries of workers? Can I say something, please? Yes. What I'm saying is this. We have a government that is working. A government is not just to pick a location and disperse it. That's not what governance is all about. You should open new vistas of avenue you could get money, internally generated revenue. If not that those people have blocked your mind by coming to dangle some carrots around you, some foreign organizations around, and they are trying to circumvent the process of paying the right, you know, monies they all should pay. What have you done with the, you know, there are a whole lot of stuff to do in the government, as in a governor or local government chairman. There are things you should do to generate money internally. If you're even taking loan to, to ensure things work, it will be allotted. Don't sit down there and tell us you can't pay, because that's why you are there. You are there not just, you are there for all of us. Whether we voted you or we didn't vote for you, so long you are not there, you are there for all of us. So if I have need of anything, I will come to you. If the people want anything, they will come to you. You are not there for yourself. Like for Edo State, say the Edo State governor. is not the governor of the Obaseki family. He's not governor of the Benedian family. He's not governor of anybody. He's the governor of Edo State. Mm. And Edo is not only Benin speaking. It's all there is. So you must carry all of us. We are not your problem. You must carry us. How you are going to solve it is not our problem. You are to devise the means. We will give you this support. If you come to say, well, this thing is not working, that's where things can come to bear. Mm. That's what we strategize. I have people working for me, I, I don't owe them. Mm. Even if funds are not forthcoming, I have to think ahead because I know somebody's pay is tied to it. Because what do I expect them to do if they don't get paid? How will they not leave? They will not be nuisance to society. That's wickedness. That's how I can define it. So if you are the governor, the, the local government chairman, even the president, and you know this is what is obtainable, this is how you do it, then we must look inwardly and look at the areas where we are lagging behind. Because every organization must generate money. These people, okay, this, uh, this, uh, this arm of, or rather this, um, 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 well, I say the, this, this um, government area on interest or where you work, let's say, for instance, Ministry of um, Agric, as it were, and then we keep plying money, pay you salaries, and I check your record, nothing is forthcoming. What are you doing there? So it's the duty of the governor to ask them what is happening. If you need some experts to come in to create some new models of things to work, ah, we have Ministry of Agriculture. I remember those days I boy, I do see them come with seed rice and stuff like that, farm produce that has been sold to the cooperative. And these are always the generated money. I know that I believe they still do that. But I'm saying, I'm just giving that as an instance. You cannot be working in an organization that you are the only one there and nobody's in the office 
and uh, people are receiving salaries. Somebody is in, is in Kogi State, perhaps, and is receiving salary under Edo State Government. What is he doing there? And they said he's, in, he's on special duty. What duty? How special is that duty that you are undertaking over there? Why not just remain there? So these are some of the lapses. And we don't blame the people. They will always come for their pay. Before you pay them, you must make them work. A laborer, he didn't say a, 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 a layabout. A laborer is worthy of his wage. So if the laborer, if the man so to speak that, com, that, that, uh, that pretend to be a laborer is not a laborer, they kick him out. We should check them and know those that are not working. For those that are genuinely working, and now you must set standards and goals for them. You don't just say, I go to the office, I report, I sit down at 7 o'clock, and at 2 o'clock I carry my bag and go home. And what have you done for the day? We must get them engaged. Everybody must be working. So that you don't just end up at the end of the day, you are done nothing and you're expecting money to come. And the governor will be angry to even release money to that angle when there's nothing coming from that uh, aspect. All right. So that is basically how I personally see it. Thank you, thank it's you. It's collaboration so, of everyone. Thank you so, so much. Our, our time is up. I've gotten signals from the presentation director telling us to call it a wrap on this show. One minute advice to Nigerians because right now it's like some sectors are beginning to sharpen their knives after it's been approved. Hiking price, inflation, you just name it. One minute. Well, I, it's a, we cannot continue to move in vicious circle. Yeah. Like I've said before, and I will continue to say, the American economy was not grown by big governments and investments as it were. It was individuals. What drives the economy is over 60, 70 percent of those that make things happen there. They are private owners. Government pay their get taxes. So government should encourage more of that. And let people do and support them in real terms, not through political links. That um, my my okay, my party is going to do this and do that, and then at the end they mess up the whole process. Get experts, people that can really study the this, the, 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 the the economy and look at it. Look at these areas we need uh, we need to fund this aspect. If we can do this, we will get some return. Right. And make the people sign good contracts. Mm. Good contracts. Good contracts. And get good those, returns. Uh, yes, good returns. Mm. Thank you, thank you so, so much, Dr. Patrick Awo It's my pleasure. Esquire, a legal practitioner. It's my I will pleasure. appreciate your wonderful analysis from the first topic to the uh, last one we it's have today pleasure. on TMI. It's always my pleasure. All right. And privilege. Mind you, according to what he said, even I led to it, everything he said here. It is an opinion. It has nothing to do with ITV radio. We'll do our best possible to make sure the rules and regulations govern the airwaves. We observe them. Well, tomorrow, Sonny Dick, of course, will be around to take you on another flight of this morning on ITV. Bye for now.